Hello, my name is Richard Nixon, and this is Caves of Could again. I've talked about this game before. I've, I've done sort of like how to play it and why it's great and stuff. But I'm 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 a bit deeper. All of those were kind of early in the game. Uh, I thought I'd show you a bit deeper in the game. So I'm playing a mutated human. This is my first time playing a mutated human. Before I've, I've only ever played Trukin, which is unmutated humans. Um. And the mutated humans are really cool. Like, it's definitely better to get to know the game before you try and play the mutants. But when you do, the mutants are a lot of fun. So this is this is my character. These are my stats. More interestingly, here's my mutation. So I've got heightened quickness. I've got horns, which just have a chance of hitting when I'm in combat. I've got multiple arms. So I started off, I picked that mutation at the start. And I started off with four arms. Uh, I currently have six arms. Uh, at one point, I just grew an extra arm, which was cool. And another time, a fish bit off one of my arms, my my primary arm, actually. I lost a really good weapon when that happened, and that was sad. But a fish uh, bit off my arm, but because I've also got regeneration, the arm grew back, and when it grew back, I had an extra hand on it. So that's pretty cool. I've got night vision, which is handy. Your regeneration is mentioned. I've got this adrenaline thing, and I've got two heads which means I can have horns on one head, but I can also wear a hat on the other head. And, you know, you always want to wear a hat because they, they do stuff. So that's my character. And then here's my equipment. And you can see you can see all my hands here. I've got a lot of hands, and they're all holding swords. This is a short, a short blade-y character, and I've got a short blade in every hand, all six of them. And I've got dual wielding. Uh, so that I can hit with, essentially, there's a chance, a reasonable chance at this point, that I hit with every weapon every time I attack something. And that is ridiculous and fucking awesome. So this is, so I'm, this, this character's probably, I'm probably like 20 or 30 hours into this character. This is, I've spent a lot of time on it. I've been taking it slow because in this game, it's a roguelike game. So if you take it, if you rush and you go up against something you're not ready for and you die, you're starting all over again. And obviously the more time you've put into a character, like after 30 hours, if I do something fucking stupid and die, I'm going to be quite sad. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I did make a backup of this save because if I do anything stupid, when, you, when you're making videos, you do stupid shit because you're not thinking properly. And if I die because of that, which is entirely possible because there is one of these dudes up here and they throw explosives at you and I hate them. I don't know who this dude is. Uh, yeah, and I yeah, you get what I'm saying. It doesn't count. If it happens in the video, it doesn't count. I'm not taking it. Okay, he's fine. He's a seed thrower, a sower. Yeah, okay. So I've got to sneak up on him and try and fuck him up. Let's go and do that. Okay, this should be okay. There we go. Easy. Let's go get that shaman. Oh, killed something else on the way. I shouldn't rush, really. Okay, shaman's gone up there. Yeah, most of the game, it's, it's, it's a very traditional roguelike, but it's, I love the graphics. If you watch the trailer for this game, uh, it's like, it's called the Early Access trailer or something. I want to heal up there, because, yeah. It's called the Early Access trailer or something. It's just this kind of, like, quite poetic, weird writing about what the game is like. Like, there's a bit in, in, in the video where she says um, something about her Indigo sisters. And if I'd watched that way before I played the game, I wouldn't know what that was talking about. But... Because I got a certain thing in this game, I know what she's talking about when she talks about her indigo sisters. And it is this. I've got this, I found this hologram bracelet. So in, in combat or at any time, I can choose a position and create a hologram of myself. And it's kind of indigo, right? Uh, so obviously, the, you know, the character talking in the uh, trailer had, you know, multiple holograms maybe. But that's that's my indigo sister there. And it, it obviously distracts enemies. They will attack that rather than attacking me sometimes. Uh and that's just fucking cool. So yeah, the, the, the poetic the poetic writing in the uh, trailer means something to me when you discover things in the game. Like it starts to come together. And 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 the trailer does a really good job of like this game feels weird. It's set it's set after a big kind of technological and environmental crash. Uh I assume from what I picked up in the game. Uh like some kind of calamity. And you've got the remnants of this high tech world and you you as essentially just a a, a, a low tech person are exploring this and finding artifacts of technology you know they cut the kind of like magic to these people you know you know you know the old trope in science fiction it's that kind of thing uh but the world the world is 
properly mysterious. They've done a really good job of making everything feel weird and and and, and magical. Like you know, there's there's talking plants. You can talk to plants. What did I find? I found I found the other day. Uh, where is it? It's an applicator. So I found sprayer brain. And if you read the text, sprayer brain. If these walls could talk. Uh, so I looked this up on the wiki because I was interested. And what I can do with that is I can spray this on a wall, table, or door to make that wall, table, or door sentient. And then I can talk to it and interact with it and it will walk around and do stuff. All right, that's silly, right? But great. That's that's the kind of weirdness in this game. And yeah, I mean, you might look at it and think this is, you know, it looks it looks crude in one way, in one way but it's so elegant. It's so... What it does, what the writing and the graphics together do, the fact that it is so sparse, the, the fact that there's so little visual information. Well, there's lots of visual information, but it's not it's not painting a picture for you. It's not showing you what things look like. And what that lets you do, like when reading a good book, is use your fucking imagination. And I miss that in game. In high fidelity games where it shows you everything, you're not you're not you're not using your imagination in the same way. You know, you're you're kind of pictorial um your sense of place kind of imagination and you know filling in the blanks imagine i don't i don't know what i'm saying but you know what i mean right so right now i'm heading to here's the world map i'm heading to uh this place you can see that's that's the cursor there i'm heading to golgotha and i'm nearly there and this is part of the main quest and as i say this character is about 30 30 hours old something like that and these little triangles on these tiles here that's about as far as i've explored so i've gone this far north I've gone this far uh, west, and I've this far south, and you get the you get the picture. Like I've ranged in about this area in about thirty hours. Not that much. I went way too far there. Uh, I've ranged in about this area in thirty hours, starting from down here in uh, Joppa. So this map is huge, and each of these squares is like three by three screens, so nine screens. This this map is huge, and there's dungeons under pretty much everything. There's so many dungeons with so many levels. It's it's an immense map full of weird, cool shit. Um, but it's weird. It's not just weird, it's not just random weird. It's weird that all sort of points towards things. It points towards mysteries that you're uncovering and clues about this world and clues about what happened and clues about how the technology works. Like I've gone quite. Um, my character's quite you know just traditional warrior melee ish. But you can go full on um, like psychic powers and uh, or you can go if you're a true kin. If, so if you're not a mutated human, you can do cybernetics if you can get access to the places that, can, you know, it's it's very free, it's very big, it's very open, but it's got like, it's got a, you know, a linear story within that. Like there's some there's some dynamic quests and stuff, but within that, there, there is a linear, a big linear story for you to uncover. Uh, I'm really, I'm just kind of babbling. This game, this game's great for anybody who's not tried it, who's interested in this kind of thing. I, th I think it's the... It's by far for me. It's the best modern roguelike because it's so it's so pure on one level. It feels like a traditional roguelike, but it's but it's so rich, and they found the perfect balance between the proc gen stuff, the random stuff, and you know the the, the written stuff, the scripted stuff, and and some that's you know a bit of both. Uh, and it's just such a lovely world to explore with lovely systems and fun you know mechanics for days. It's like. It's like Morrowind, and it's, I mean, it's more expansive than Morrowind, really, in the terms in terms of the mad stuff you can do with your character. You know, if, you, if it's one of those games where if you can think of it, you can probably do it, no matter how stupid it is. Like having six arms and having a sword in every arm, kind of thing. You know, I want to go after that sword. There he is, got him. They can be dangerous. Yeah, you just walk around bumping into things. <laughs> I'll see if I can get to Golgotha before the video ends. Where are we currently? We are right next to it, okay. Now let's just keep going right. Oh, something over there. Yeah, cool. So I'm high enough level now that some of these easier enemies aren't giving me any XP. Oh, oh that's a lot. So far I've got a point defense drone, because missiles can be a problem in this game early on. So I've got a point defense drone now. So... I don't have to worry about missiles as much, which is nice. This is, this is a big, a big old fight. But I'm doing all right. That's when you hear that little pew. That's my point defense going off against missiles.
There we go. Killed a bunch of people. Didn't get very much XP though, because they're all very weak. Oh god, there's a shit more. more. <laughs> like you're, you're probably just seeing this and seeing, you know, shitty sprites bumping into each other. But yeah, I'm at the point. I'm, I'm attached to this character. I'm 30 hours into this character in this world, and like, this is all playing out in my imagination now, and it's great. There we go. Let's heal up a little bit. Okay, I should, should, should I probably leave it there. Like, I think I've done enough to say this game. This game's still great. It's still in early access. It's been in early access for a long time, but there's plenty to go out. Like, I've got. What have I got? I've got 162 hours in this game. Like, that's, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty to play with here. And it is. You know, if you're not interested in this kind of game, if this looks boring to you, don't worry about it. But, you know, if you like roguelikes and you like deep, mysterious worlds and deep, really deep, like, um, um, mechanics, mechanical systems, um, and emergent kind of mechanical stuff, then get it. It's just great. But, yeah, let's just go to the next screen and see if we've got Golgotha. And if not, I'll end it. There we go. We've got a field. Yeah, so, so I'll end that there. Caves of Cood, still fucking great. So good. Um, I love you. Goodbye.